All right, folks, this video is going to be dark. We are going to take some time to catastrophize a little bit. And usually I try to stay away from doing things like that. I don't want to, you know, contribute any more toxicity to this primary process than is already out there. Nonetheless, I do believe it's important for us to kind of consider certain scenarios. You know, dwelling on this brokered convention, I worry about talking about it too much because I don't want you to take away from these videos that, you know, the situation is hopeless and we can't win. Therefore, you might as well check out and not canvas and phone bank and donate to Bernie Sanders. That's not what I want you to take away from this video. I want us to understand that we're going up against a political behemoth, and this might literally be our last attempt to save democracy. So if you're in a good mood, please do not watch this video. Do yourself the favor, but I do think it's important that we indulge a little bit here. Um, after that debate in Nevada, when I saw every single candidate on that stage, with the exception of Bernie Sanders, say that they're open to superdelegates stealing the nomination away from the person with the most votes, it literally gave me this sick feeling in my stomach. Like I felt physically nauseous from that. And since that debate, I've been haunted by that. Like this thought in the back of my mind thinking, do we even live in a democracy? And this entire election really is going to put our democracy to the test. And it honestly may not survive. It may not survive. Um, because we have a substantial portion in the Democratic Party openly suggesting that maybe it's a good idea that we have a brokered convention in order to allow superdelegates to steal the nomination away from Bernie Sanders. And everyone on that debate stage was basically jockeying for it to be them, including Elizabeth Warren. And we need to talk about this so we can maybe plan some scenarios, protests and whatnot. But it doesn't just seem like this is something that they're considering as a possibility. In order to defeat Bernie Sanders now with the insurmountable lead that he's going to have after Super Tuesday, this is the strategy now. The strategy, I repeat, is to steal it from Bernie Sanders because that's the only way that they can stop him. There's an article in Politico that says that that is Mike Bloomberg's key strategy and on top of that, other Democrats also have this strategy. So understand... They know they can't get enough pledged delegates to surpass Bernie, but they can still be the nominee. They will still remain in the race in hopes of pulling their delegates and just taking it away from Bernie Sanders. I mean, I just want to take a moment to think about how morally repugnant that is. Like, let me just explain my position. Like my mom, for example, she's someone who was never politically engaged um, she registered for the first time in her life at 65 years old to vote for Bernie Sanders in 2016. Uh, just the other day, she donated $15 to Bernie Sanders. This is the first donation that she's ever given to a political candidate in her entire life. So to take that away from someone, and she's just one of many people, but I'm sure that a lot of people have been brought into the process, namely young people, but to take that away from them, for them to get so excited, knock on doors, donate to a candidate that they believe in, and then you just snatch that away from them like that, there's just no going back. There's no recovering from that. And it's just interesting and hypocritical how nobody's talking about the popular vote anymore. We had Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Democrats everywhere screeching at the top of their lungs about how important it was that we abolish the Electoral College because, I mean, the person with the most votes wins, right? That's the way it should be. And now they're saying, you know what? Party bosses... They should have a say in stealing the nomination away from Bernie Sanders if maybe I can benefit from that. It truly is morally reprehensible. And I want to get to this Politico article by David Siders because he's going to explain a little bit of the details of Mike Bloomberg's strategy, how he's currently lobbying party bosses to take the nomination away from Bernie and give it to him. He writes, Mike Bloomberg is privately lobbying Democratic Party officials and donors allied with his moderate opponents to flip their allegiance to him and block Bernie Sanders in the event of a brokered national convention. The effort, largely executed by Bloomberg's senior state-level advisors in recent weeks, attempts to prime Bloomberg for a second ballot contest at the Democratic National Convention in July by poaching supporters of Joe Biden and other moderate Democrats, according to two different strategists familiar with the talks, and 
and unaffiliated with Bloomberg. The outreach has involved meetings and telephone calls with supporters of Biden and Pete Buttigieg, as well as uncommitted DNC members in Virginia, Texas, Florida, Oklahoma, and North Carolina, according to one of the strategists who participated in meetings and calls. With Sanders' emergence as the frontrunner in the presidential primary, Democrats in those states have recently raised the prospect that the Democratic Socialists could be a top-of-the-ticket liability. There's a whole operation going on, which is genius, said one of the strategists, who is unaffiliated with any campaign, and it's going to help them win on the second ballot. They're telling them that's their strategy. Other candidates have quietly been in contact for months with superdelegates, the DNC members, members of Congress, and other party officials who could not vote on the first ballot at a contested national convention, but none have showcased it as a feature of their campaign as Hillary Clinton did in 2016. If Sanders secures a plurality of delegates but loses the nomination on a second ballot, many moderate and progressive Democrats alike predict the national convention in Milwaukee would devolve into chaos. Following the debate, former Los Angeles Mayor Antonio Villagayrosa, who has endorsed Mike Bloomberg, has chaired the 2012 Democratic National Convention, said a second ballot will likely be required this year. So let's just get one thing straight. Anyone who claims that the nomination should be taken from Bernie Sanders and uh, given to someone else, they're lying to you if electability is the justification for that. Because do you honestly believe that if you steal this nomination away from the most popular politician in America, that we're going to fall in line and support anyone else, even if it's Elizabeth Warren? You are handing Donald Trump a landslide. And I've said this before, that is the least of your concerns because unquestionably, Trump cruises to re-election. But on top of that, the Democratic Party is going to self-destruct, blow itself to pieces, and afterwards, they're going to try to pick up the scraps and it can't survive this. The party as an institution would die. No institution can remain legitimate after something like that. Once you take it that far, then nobody believes in the process. Let me tell you this. I will never, ever vote for another Democrat ever again if this were to be the case. I promise you that because I can't support an institution that doesn't believe in democracy. Like sometimes in politics, you're going to win. Sometimes you're going to lose. But if the fight's fair... I can accept that, right? If we did everything in our power to get Bernie elected, but Biden won fair and square, man, that would be really disappointed, disappointing, but at least it was a fair fight. If you tell us effectively that our votes do not matter and you undermine every single fucking thing that we have done now for five years to get Bernie Sanders elected... I'm never voting Democrat again. And guess what? Like back in 2016, when all of these Democratic Party loyalists were browbeating us because we wouldn't come out to support Hillary Clinton after the DNC rigged the primary against Bernie Sanders, I still voted. And Democrats didn't like that I voted for Jill Stein. But guess what? I also voted for Democrats down the ticket, right? I voted in House races for Democrats and local races for Democrats. But guess what? When I say I'll never vote for a Democrat again, I mean never again. So my Senator Jeff Merkley is up for re-election. If Democrats steal the nomination, not even Jeff Merkley gets my vote. I don't vote Democrat ever again because this institution is illegitimate and I cannot lend my support to that illegitimate institution. And look, I just want people in the comment section, if you're still watching, what would you do if the nomination is taken from you? Would you support the nominee? Just... We'll see this because I have a feeling that maybe this video gets attention from other people and they're going to say, look at this Bernie bro, he's Bernie or bust. It's not just me, it's everyone. And not only do I personally make the choice to not vote in this election and just boycott the entire election, I tell the 300,000 people in my audience to do the same exact fucking thing because if you're going to steal a nomination away from us, we're not going to give you power. We're not going to give you permission to rule, to be, you know, in control of government when you just told all of us that our voices don't matter. No, not at all. And guess what? My audience may only be 300,000, but there's another 300,000 with David Dole, another 800,000 with Kyle Kalinske, another 200,000 
with Tim Black. All of us collectively in indie media as a block will form a boycott of this entire election. And maybe that's not enough. But understand, you're going to lose if you do this. Like, we don't even have to do anything. Like, we can sit back and just not vote and not say anything. And you still lose because this is such a brazen theft of an election of democracy that normal people won't take it. Non-politically savvy individuals won't stand for that. And I can already envision this situation where they steal it from Bernie and give it to Elizabeth Warren and then they browbeat us because, oh, this is the most left-leaning Democratic nominee in decades. No, absolutely not. And look, I was already Bernie or bust in 2016. I've been Bernie or bust in 2020, but I'm someone who kind of likes to hold my cards close to my chest because I wanted to tell everyone to vote blue no matter who once Bernie becomes the nominee. But understand, nobody gets my vote unless it's Bernie Sanders. And on top of that, I take that a step further. If the nomination is stolen, I don't vote Democrat anymore. I'm done with that. And I guarantee you, I'm not the only one. A lot of other people are going to say the same fucking thing. Because again, we cannot participate in a process that is illegitimate. Okay? So the party will be just demolished. And even David Plouffe said this on MSNBC. The party can't recover from this. They can't recover from this. So it doesn't matter if you browbeat people and fearmonger about Donald Trump. Nothing will matter. If you do this, you destroy the party. But understand that they know this. This is the strategy. They would rather lose to Trump and literally destroy the fucking party if it means stopping Bernie Sanders. That's how morally bankrupt the Democratic Party is, including Elizabeth Warren. If Bernie Sanders wins, that's basically our only hope because then he can take control of the party apparatus, change those institutional mechanisms that are just brazenly undemocratic, get rid of superdelegates. But if he loses and you tell us very explicitly that there's no fucking way that our voices matter because if we ever get another candidate, you're just going to take it if you don't like them. That party cannot survive as an institution. That party collapses. And I will actively campaign to get people to not vote because you can't participate in a process that just flies in the face of democracy you have to boycott this election you have no choice that's the only moral option this isn't just about the next four years with donald trump this is about the next 100 years with our democracy if we can even survive that far with fucking climate change and not all die so I don't know what else to say about this. The fact that we have to contemplate what would happen if our votes just get stolen from us. It shouldn't be the case. But even fucking Elizabeth Warren and her surrogates, these little sycophantic Democratic Party loyalists, are okay with that. Well, we are going to absolutely fight to stop you from doing that. And if you're successful here... There's going to be hell to pay. People will take to the streets and protest in every fucking city in America. You're not going to be able to steal this from us. We're not going to take this lying down. We will not accept you stealing it from us with whatever justification that you have. We won't take that. There will be hell to pay. I promise you that. So I don't care who it is. Michael Bloomberg, Elizabeth Warren. You can steal this nomination and give it to AOC. If Bernie gets the most votes... He becomes the nominee. I don't give a flying fuck if he gets 29% and then the person closest to him gets 28.5%. More votes, we win. We walk in and we walk out as the nominee. Period. End of story. We're not negotiating here. So I want everyone to be as loud as they possibly can in telling Tom Perez and telling the DNC and telling Elizabeth Warren and telling Pete Buttigieg that if you steal this from us, you lose. You lose and you destroy the party and we don't vote. And it's not just that we don't vote for the top of the ticket. We don't vote in local races. We don't vote in Senate and House races. You lose the House. You lose the Senate. You lose the White House. And then your entire fucking party collapses. So choose wisely. Think about how badly you want to defeat Bernie Sanders. Because if you truly want to risk everything, risk destroying the party to defeat Bernie Sanders, understand the consequences that will come to fruition if you fucking do that, you goddamn ghouls. Fucking try us. Fucking try us, I dare you.